الحاجة الثانية كنت عايزة أعرف برضه تقييم المنظمة لوضع الاقتصاد المصري بعد 30 يونيو وإيه وجهة نظرك للاقتصاد المصري؟ سواء السؤال موجه لمستر زبيدي مش كده؟ I hope uh, that the conversation will touch on some very important issues like um, the future of the relationship between Egypt and the organization and also the future of the organization itself. Uh, we are trying now to implement uh, the agreements that were negotiated in Bali uh, last year, and there are challenges in that exercise, as many of you know. So my idea is to uh, brief uh, the president on what is happening. Uh, this is something that I already did this morning. Uh, with uh, the minister and the prime minister. I will continue that conversation with the president and, um, and we'll also look uh, forward uh, um, for looking for solutions. How can we uh, bridge the gaps that we now face uh, in this discussion in the WTO? I will stop here for the translation of continue. نتطلع لإجراء مباحثات مع سيدة الرئيس حول قضايا مهمة للغاية تشمل مستقبل العلاقات بين مصر ومنظمة التجارة العالمية وكذلك مستقبل المنظمة في حد ذاتها وتحديدا ما يتعلق بتنفيذ اتفاقيات بالي وتعلمون جميعا أن هناك الكثير من التحديات التي نواجهها في صدد تنفيذ تلك الاتفاقيات وأنا بصدد إطلاع سيادة الرئيس على ما يجري وكذلك مباحثات إجراء مباحثات مع سيادته فيما يتعلق بإيجاد حلول وسد الفضوات ومعالجة التحديات التي تواجهنا في هذا الصدد وهذا ما قمت به فعليا صباح اليوم مع سعادة رئيس الوزراء وأنتظر أن أقوم بذلك مع سعادة الرئيس so my understanding is that uh, Egypt is undertaking very important reforms, uh, political, economic, uh, trade reforms, um, which would allow for more opening, allow for uh, more opportunities for growth, um, economic and social, uh, that would allow for more integration into the world economy. Um, all of those things, all of those uh, principles and ideas are ideas that the WTO supports and are ideas where uh, the multilateral system can help. Uh, for example, uh, showing stability in the rules, showing instability in the process. And that is precisely what the business community worldwide is looking for. And I think that uh, this is what I hope uh, the conversation will also um, uh, approach uh, in, in when I meet the president. أيضا فيها منظومة التجارة الدولية متعددة الأقراص التي تضمن وجود قدر كبير من الاستقرار في العملية الاقتصادية للدول الأنانية والأكلة في النمو وهذا ما يتطلع له المجتمع الدولي في الحقيقة وهذا ما نسعى لإجراء مباحثة بشكل Regarding what? The Suez Canal project. Ah, okay. So, from the second one. Um, Excuse me. 
not to translate the question. Oh, okay. So the benefit of that. Yes, yes. So, uh, starting from the second part of the question, uh, the Suez Canal project has everything to do with trade, has everything to do with um, integration, has everything to do with reducing costs of doing business, and all of these things are supported uh, by the WTO, and I am very hopeful that this project will be a very important um, element uh, of development, not only for Egypt, but for all the economies that will benefit from, these, uh, from this project. So this is a very welcome uh, uh, development, and to the extent that we can, we will support it in every, in every way we can. Um, on the first part of the question, uh, uh, yes, yes, part, yes, sorry. On the first part of the question, um, uh, some countries uh, have um, indicated that they have concerns on food security and that they would like to see advances in the negotiation uh, that regards food security programs. Um, let me give some time for translation. <laughs> So those countries, as I understand, don't have a problem with the implementation of the Bali Agreement itself and the Trade Facilitation Agreement in particular, um, but they would like to see uh, some kind of outcomes in the food security area as well. So, of course, uh, food security is very important. It's a very legitimate concern. Egypt itself has interests of food security, uh, is interested in negotiations about food security, but the question is how to address these concerns more immediately without precluding us from implementing what has already been agreed in Bali. So that kind of, uh, of um, solution is what we're looking for, how to provide comfort to those who want uh, to, uh, who want assurances that the food security issue is going to be addressed properly and at the same time allow the implementation of the Bali agreements. So that will be our priority when we come back to work in Geneva this month.
جيد بهذا الشخص فيأتي هذه المبادرة في إطار هذه الوساطة السابقة وأعتقد أننا تقدمنا باقتراح أو على الأقل نصيحة لمدير عام المنظمة بضرورة الاستمرار في الاستماع إلى آراء الأطراف المختلفة الاستمرار في التفاوض والبعد عن وضع حد تاريخي أقصى للوصول إلى حلول نحن على اتصال نحن مصر على اتصال بأطراف عديدة من أعضاء منظمة التجارة العالمية كما قال لنا اتصالات بالدول العربية كلها لنا اتصالات بالدول الإفريقية كنت على اتصال مباشر بسيد وزير تجارة ال دولة نيجيريا وفي الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية اجتمعت في هذا الصدد مع الممثل التجاري للولايات المتحدة الأمريكية في هذا الإطار وتقدمنا باقتراح كما ذكرت وسنستمر في إجراء الوساطة اللازمة للوصول إلى النتائج الإيجابية بإذن الله وهنا أحب أقول أن مصر بتلعب دورها التقليدي على الساحة العالم. This initiative actually is part and parcel of our previous mediation, and we have actually advised Mr. Roberto and his SSA to continue listening and to continue negotiating with the different parties involved, and not to actually set a definite or designate a definite date for deadline for negotiations. And Egypt in this regard is uh, in contact uh, with different uh, parties uh, in the WTO and with other uh, Arab and African uh, countries. I have met and I am in contact with uh, the Nigerian uh, Minister of uh, Trade and I have uh, met with the uh, universal representative in uh, the United States and we will continue actually having uh, our military uh, role uh, and uh, we hope that we will arrive at some 
Well, from here I'm going to Rwanda. Um, then I have to go back to Geneva after that. Um, I have, um, then I think on Monday I'm going to Holland um, for a, a bilateral visit there as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the, uh, the fund that we are establishing in the WTO to help countries who want uh, technical assistance to implement the um, trade facilitation agreement. Then um, I come back to Geneva, uh, and the idea would be to uh, convene a meeting of um, of uh, the ambassadors in Geneva uh, as soon as we resume work um, uh, there. Um, to see uh, where members are after uh, the pause that we have over the summer. Uh, what did they think about, whether they have new ideas, what they think can be done at this point in time. <laughs> So after that meeting, we're going to have, um, I don't know, maybe about two weeks or so of intense consultations, um, not only by me, but also by the chairs of the uh, relevant uh, fora in the WTO, the subsidiary bodies. Um, and after that, those consultations, those two weeks of consultations, I suppose we have to meet again at the highest possible level in Geneva, so with the ambassadors at, the, at a minimum, to figure out what the result of those consultations were and whether we have solutions uh, for um, the impasse that we are facing today. It is very difficult to predict what is going to happen uh, in the next few weeks. It will depend immensely on what I hear from members. <coughs> And my hope is that Egypt will be a very active participant in trying to find the solutions that we so badly need. Uh, my name is Tamim from Bloomberg. Uh, my question for Mr. Roberto uh, is about Russia. We have uh, seen that uh, the U.S. trade representatives are meeting to, uh, to discuss what they say is Russia's, Russia's inadherence to, to, to WTO 
uh, regulation, and we have also uh, heard that the EU, uh, some EU representatives are filing a complaint uh, against uh, Russia. Uh, can you clarify? And, and we have also seen that Mr. Lavrov, uh, the Russian foreign minister, saying that they do not want to leave the World Trade Organization. So, can you please clarify uh, the situation with uh, Russia's membership in the, the World Trade Organization? السيد الرئيس هو سؤال حول موقف منظمه التجاره العالميه من روسيا حيث ان هناك حديث في الولايات المتحده عن عدم ادعان روسيا لقواعد المنظمه وهناك حديث ايضا في الاتحاد الاوروبي بشان تقديم شكوى بشان روسيا في المنظمه وهناك ايضا تصريح لوزير الخارجيه الروسيه سيدي لافروف يوضح فيه عدم في الحقيقه هروب روسيا من منظمه التجاره العالميه وثمت ثلاث في دفع التصريحات نرجو من سيادتكم تقديم توضيح بشان عضويه روسيا في المنظمه. Well, I don't have to tell you that uh, the situation uh, that you described is essentially one of a geopolitical nature. And it is not surprising, of course, that it has economic uh, uh, consequences, uh, in particular uh, with regard to trade and, um, and the measures that have been taken uh, from all sides uh, trying to address the situation. And of course, whenever trade measures are put in place, uh, the WTO uh, often becomes um, an important component of this equation of this scenario. What may or may not happen in terms of um, WTO involvement uh, will depend exclusively, and, and I emphasize, will depend exclusively on the options which are taken by the members. It is not the WTO who is going to take the initiative to do anything. It is the members who will decide how the WTO can help. If a member decides that it wants to uh, make re uh, recourse to the dispute settlement system, um, it is perfectly entitled to do so. Uh, if a member uh, decides that they want to hold consultations and open a dialogue in the WTO, of course the organization is there for those purposes as well. So whatever the WTO can do to help to diminish the tension and to open a dialogue that may help in finding a, a, a solution for the geopolitical nature of this problem, um, I am going to dedicate all resources we have to ensure that we contribute in that direction. فإذا ما قررت دولة العضو بمنظمة التجارة العالمية أن تلجأ لاستخدام آلية تسوية المنازعات الموجودة لدى المنظمة أو حتى إجراء مشاورات وفتح باب حوار بشأن تلك المشكلة فإن المنظمة سوف تدعم ذلك بكل الطرق وذلك بهدف احتواء التوتر وفتح مجال للحوار وإيجاد حل لهذه المشكلة ذات الطبيعة الجيوسياسية كما أشرنا وسوف تسخر كل الموارد اللازمة لذلك. So the WTO is above all a forum for dialogue and solution finding. 
to the extent that the members want to use the WTO for those purposes, uh, they are more than willing, they, they, we are more than happy to, to help them. precise conversations in Geneva to try to handle the situation that we face concerning the implementation of the Bali Agreement, uh, in particular the Trade Facilitation Agreement, uh, because um, there was a deadline for the approval of the protocol that would open the agreement for exceptions. Of course, uh, we were also discussing um, the work program uh, on the conclusion of the Doha round, uh, which is a very broad uh, undertaking. Um, and those conversations are ongoing. It is difficult to tell, however, at this point, um, how that conversation, that broader conversation, may or may not be affected by the impasse that we are facing concerning the implementation of the Bali agreements. So those broader conversations are going to continue, but only the members can tell me um, how much progress and how quickly we can make progress in those areas uh, in light of the impasse that we experienced implementing the Bali agreements. So we will have a, a more precise idea of where we are after this consultation period that we're going to have in September. Uh, 
20 September. In the WTO, um, whatever we do, we have to find a way of delivering results which are acceptable, satisfactory, <coughs> helpful to all members. We are now 160. The developed countries are an important part of that exercise, as much as the developing countries as well themselves. So if we are going to find solutions, if we are going to negotiate outcomes, everybody will have to contribute. Everybody will have to do his part. And the developed countries can contribute. They are big players. They are big participants in trade. And they will have, they will have to listen to the aspirations of developing countries and see how they can contribute to the results. في المنظمة وفي الحقيقة الدول المتقدمة والدول الأنانية على حد سواء هي جزء من هذه المعادلة التي تحققها المنظمة المنظمة وإذا أردنا أن نتبحث أو نتفاوض في الحقيقة بشأن قضايا معينة فعلى الجميع أن يشارك وأن يقوم بالدور المرغوب به والدول المتقدمة في هذا الصدد هي من اللاعبين الكبار في مجال التجارة العالمية ولا بد أن تستمع ايضا لتطلعات الدول الانانيه في هذا الشان وان تسعى لتنفيذها. والسؤال الثاني كان متعلق بالاصلاحات الجمركيه اللي اتخذتها مصر من بعد دوله هونج كونج واللي كانت اكثر من مطالبات المنظمه في المرحله اللي تم فيها ده عندنا 2017 اعتقد السنه الجايه او اللي بعدها جمارك السيارات هتبقى زيرو هل هننفذ ده او هناخد فتره تمديد؟ شكرا. I, With regard to um, Egypt and the question is for His Excellency the Minister, and uh, in this respect, I would say that Egypt has uh, taken some measures and adopted some measures with regard to implementing the customs reforms uh, uh, after the Hong Kong uh, round uh, and negotiations. And uh, I believe, the gentleman is saying, I believe that uh, maybe by next year or the year uh, to come, uh, there will be uh, no. Uh, 
customs uh, or tariffs on vehicles or in, and autom automobiles? Will this be uh, implemented uh, in fact, or uh, should we have another case given? Uh, أولا أحب أقول إنه الإصلاح الجمركي uh, الذي حدث uh, بعد uh, اتفاقية هونغ كونغ uh, أدى إلى تقليص uh, حجم ال, uh, الميزان العجز في الميزان التجاري وبالتالي uh, لم يكن له أثرا سلبيا على uh, التجارة الخليجية بل على عكس من ذلك نرى ارتقاء كبير في مستوى الصناعة والمنتجات المصرية نتيجة للمنافسة. The customs reforms that were implemented in the wake of the Hong Kong round actually managed and helped to reduce and diminish the deficit in the trade balance, and this did not have any negative ramifications on foreign trade. On the contrary, it has prompted the improvement of Egyptian industry and Egyptian products, which has enhanced the competitiveness. As a result of competition. Thank you. قد يكون هناك بعض التشوهات في النظام الجمركي الحالي ونحن ننظر إلى هذه التشوهات ونتلقى الشكاوى ونعمل على تصحيحها أما فيما يخص صناعة السيارات ففي إطار اتفاقية الشراكة مع الاتحاد الأوروبي سنة 2019 المفروض أن تدخل السيارات بدون جمالك أمامنا خمس سنوات نحن نعمل حاليا على وضع سياسة صناعية لمنح حوافز كافية للنهوض بصناعة السيارات المصرية كي تتمكن من مواجهة هذه المنافسة الناتجة عن إلغاء الضرائب أو التعريف الجمركية على السيارات الأوروبية uh, there are certain uh, setbacks that we are trying to address and, uh, well, uh, certain distortions. Distortions uh, with regard to the customs uh, reforms. And we have received, uh, received some of the complaints that we are working to uh, solve. And uh, with regard to uh, the automobile industry or vehicle industry in Egypt and within the framework of the uh, partnership with the uh, European Union, uh, by the year 2019, uh, we will have uh, zero uh, custom tariffs on automobiles. And we are trying to develop an industry policy in Egypt uh, that would uh, provide uh, some incentives uh, for this industry in Egypt uh, to uh, address the uh, ramifications and adverse ramifications of the competition uh, that would uh, be the result of eliminating the uh, custom tariffs on automobiling. We hope that we will succeed in our effort, and if we fail, then we can have our deliberations and discussion about it. Dawai Khalid from the Daily News Egypt. My question is for Mr. Roberto. How much the Suez Canal project is expected to affect the international trade volume, and how do you assess the government's procedures? in implementing the project regarding the uh, proposed fund, the method of collecting the fund, and the implementation period. Thank you. زيادة حجم التجارة العالمية وكذلك رؤيتي وتقييمي فيما يتعلق بأداء الحكومة المصرية في احتباب مصادر التقنين لهذا المشروع وإدارة المشروع. How the Egyptian government managed to finance the execution of this project? Well, it is a it is a very ambitious enterprise, no doubt about it, and I am absolutely sure that. When fully implemented, uh, it will help uh, the, um, the region uh, 
Egypt itself and all those who will make use of the, of the canal um, by reducing costs, by integrating even further uh, the production chains. So it is going to be a very important uh, project. I have no doubts about that. Um, as in every big project, uh, there are big challenges. And those big challenges involve uh, financing, involve investments, involve partnerships, involve policy decisions. Um, and all of those, uh, I'm sure, are being examined um, carefully by the Egyptian government. Um, I, I wish I had uh, uh, the answers uh, for all of those. Uh, I don't. Uh, but um, I'm sure there will be partners. Uh, I heard, for example, that uh, the World Bank is going to be a partner in this project. I'm sure that there will be other partners. Um, but I'm, uh, I, I, I don't have the full equation uh, before me.
اما بالنسبه للزيارة القادمة طبعا لدي مقابلات عديدة مع المسؤولين بما فيهم وزير التجارة الروسي وما في شك انه الاحاديث ستتطرق اردنا ام ابينا الى مشكلات التي تواجه دبليو تي او وكيفية الخروج من الازمة الحالية. understood correctly it's about uh, the question is about the signing of agreements uh, in the WTO and outside the WTO is that what you I would repeat the question once yes, more please. the lady was asking you sir yes. that uh, are you in need in the WTO to conclude new agreements in order to foster economic justice worldwide or should you only uh, activate the already the existing, uh, existing uh, yeah. agreements no, the to achieve the same purpose Yes, no, the, the environment for business in the world has changed considerably since the 80s. And when the WTO agreements were negotiated um, in the Uruguay round, uh, the internet did not even exist yet. And of course, uh, what we negotiated then is still very relevant. Um, and it's not that the disciplines are frozen because we are interpreting them and we are evolving in the dispute settlement mechanism. So every time that you have, for example, a dispute between two members and that the appellate body uh, interprets the disciplines, the rules, the legal system evolves progressively. But that process is too slow and there are areas where we need to get into and of course the best way to do it is to negotiate new agreements and we are trying to do that but to negotiate agreements you need trust you need assurances from everyone that we're going to do our best to find a solution, a satisfactory solution, and that we're going to honor them, that we're going to implement them. Um, right now, we are not uh, in, in, uh, in the perfect solution, in a perfect situation, because while in Bali, we seem to have a big success in negotiating agreements. 
we are having problems now implementing those agreements. My hope is that we can regain the trust and that we can continue to negotiate agreements multilaterally.